Jesus Papoleto Melendez. Everybody knows me. I'm a, one of the original founders of the New Rican Poets Movement. And I was born and raised here in East Harlem. We're on 104th Street between Lexington and 3rd in front of the Eminem Studios with the firehouse used to be here when I was a kid. I'm being banned from coming in today. Uh, although there is a community meeting here that's open to the public, politicians are gonna be here, all kinds of people from outside our community. But I live in this community and I'm not being allowed here. I know how to use video equipment. I know how to use Final Cut Pro. <laughs> but yet, I'm being locked out of here. So I'm gonna release my article called Digital Apartheid in El Barrio because I feel that this is just what's gonna happen. If you don't cooperate with these people, you can't use the facility in your community. So that means that they're tyrants in our community are in control of public access, which means the public has no access. Mm -hmm. Hi, good morning, how are you? Good morning, how are you? Yes. Hello. Hi, how are you? So you're letting the press in. Can we come in for democracy now? I defined access as the right to have one's own say on electronic media. We are all dominated by electronic media. For the most part, it's a one-way process. But it shouldn't be a one-way process any more than any means of communication should be one way. So what we're trying to do in Access is to give millions of ordinary people the right to use this vehicle to speak with each other and to speak with the uh, public officials who control our lives. Here, here comes the poet. <laughs> Community representative. Speaking Hello. Barrio. Good morning. Would you like to say something about public access? Don't fuck with me. Hey, fuck you. Oh, no, 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 you, you're gonna get in with that attitude? I don't have an attitude. You're the one that had the attitude. Well, he was the one who had the attitude, boy. Yeah. Okay, it's our film with Josie Baby. <laughs> and why is, why is access important? Access is important because unless we have a way of speaking on this dominant means of communication, we're going to be more and more passive consumers of whatever we're given, we're going to have a culture that's dominated by passivity, and we're also going to see fewer and fewer people taking an active part in their local government. I think that access has already, uh, access and cable at least, in the United States has already proven that it can make a very real change in the way local government is conducted. Took, he took out after you. He, he, well, he almost hit me. Yes. <laughs> Wish he had. <laughs> okay. Hey, good morning. How are you? Hi. As long as you don't live in the community, you're welcome to go in there. I am? Yeah. If you live in the community, you can't go in? Hell no. Why? Mm -hmm. Because this is not for the community. I thought it was built for the community. No, it's not built for the community. It's built for whomever they control in the community. Oh, we're being denied access, and I live in this community. I live like six wow. blocks away from here. Wow. But I'm not being allowed in, and I almost got attacked by this guy just now. We have it on tape to show it to you. So the meeting Hi. here is going to be bogus. Hello. This is bogus you welcome. An actor? <laughs> you know? Are you an actor? Yes. What? I want to be. Are, yeah. well, who, are, are you here? here today? Why am I here? I got invited. <laughs> Democracy is a very fragile thing. I don't know why we assume that when a dictatorial country turns democratic that it's going to survive easily. It needs nurturing because it's so much easier for a few people to dominate many people than for many people to govern themselves. 
We're just beginning to learn how this is done. In this country, we're finding that it's the constant battle between the few who can control the means of communication and the many who have the votes but are lulled into passivity by watching television, listening to radio, and being inactive. Access is one way of getting us all to speak about public affairs, to take a part in, a, in public affairs. My own view is that we want to use access to get people to watch television less and get in their, involved in their public affairs more. Um, I've been an educator for more than 25 years in the nonprofit world, and um, the adult education program served about a thousand people each year, wow. 18 and older. And it was a beautiful community, and it still is a wonderful um, learning program because the students we had were representing the urban population. Most of them were uh, people that left high school for various reasons, were trying to get their high school equivalency. We had people that were returning from prison. We had students um, that were immigrants that were learning English as their first language. And for me, I was very proud because our program was a place for people to reinvent themselves, see themselves in, in a new way. Hi, Peter. How are you? Good. You know, we would like to come in, and I understood this is the official opening, and we'd like to... I live in the community! Good morning. 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 You will get in once I told you you will get in. Yeah, but you know, eh? Can you believe it? Staten Island has access and New York City does not. All we have is channels. Public access, the concept of public access is access to the means of production of imagery. Access to equipment, access to training, access to publicity in the newspaper. Do you realize the newspaper, and this is not a, a, a coincidence, I think there's a reason for it, refuses to run in the television listings what's going on on the access channel. And that's a non-commercial listing. People do not pay to have CNN listed, CBS, NBC, ABC. They don't want people, regular people, to make media. Because maybe it will sound different than what the mainstream media is putting out. And there's nothing more powerful in, in for people learning than to see contradictions, right? Hmm, one person says yes, another person says no. Maybe the truth is a bit more complicated. That's what public access is all about. It's about everybody being able to appreciate that life is a bit more complicated, <laughs> right? And that you're gonna have to struggle and really, and, and really think through. And also access is about having fun, it's about children making media, it's about disabled people making media, it's about deaf people making media, it's about blind people are producing public access television in many communities. I mean, this, this is just, you know what, everything that we fought for fails here. These are tyrants in control of a community facility where they're not gonna let the community participate. They're not just blocking me, they're blocking me in preparation of blocking you. You know, how are you going to take someone as renowned as myself, who has done video and many community supportive activities, and you're going to keep me out of this place? Why? Because, as Rick X said, it's really important that all of this media not be monopolized in one place. It should, every, it's the major medium, and it's really important that everybody have a voice, or that there at least be a place where, if you want, you can have a voice, and you don't have to pay a lot of money. See, that's what's happening. People are coming into, these are what, interlopers. It doesn't matter if they're black, Latino, they're still interlopers because they do not have the community at heart. In fact, they, uh, uh, they cock block people in our community who have the community at heart. They just block them, they take up these jobs, they make hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> they won't let us they won't in. Let us we in. really just wanted to come in and I, I heard this was a public uh, event and we're being locked out, and it's like they let New York one in. Like we're we're covering it for the community. Are you the one who had the big fight with Ice? Yes, she had the big fight she with did, me. He, he, he did not. I mean, you, I, Here. I witnessed a lot of that. It, she came after him like a pit bull. And all because I was part of the coalition, the activist and she coalition. she kicked him out of the class, out and of he the was yeah. one of the most helpful leaders, members. You know, no, I, I read yeah. your email. I cannot be a community leader because I'm too concerned about the community. 
to say, another metaphor that's been used to try to describe access to people is to describe the airwaves, the airwaves, quite literally, like the waterways and you know, the land. The airwaves are really a public trust. And that if you could think of access as sort of the public parks of the airwaves, and they have to be tended to, they have to be guarded against uh, all kinds of greedy corporate use, and they have to be uh, guarded from abuse. And that's what public access is. It's a kind of an electronic park and uh, that we need to conserve, just like we try to conserve the national forest lands and the national parks as one area in, in the land that is taken care of for the community and to be used by the community. That's what public access channels are to the airwaves. There have been some problems and uh, my own involvement with this happened when I tried to get um, some grants reinstated because uh, m many of the alternative media institutions in this city really uh, always need money, let's put it that way, nonprofits. They're definitely a nonprofit. And, uh, but there was a program that m &N ran for over 10 years, um, which was a grant-giving uh, entity um, of giving production money to uh, places like Downtown Community Television, to Asian Cinevision, uh, to the um, uh, Union Settlement, for example, uh, and to two organizations that are near and dear to my heart, Paper Tiger and Deep Dish. And they stopped giving those grants, and um, I asked about reinstating them and was told that, well, they're, they're not going to do them in the same way and they're going to do different kinds of grants. And I really felt that there should be a way to um, try to um, impress upon the, the board of m and why those grants were so important. So a group of us who had been former recipients of those grants, we got together and we tried to go to the board meeting uh, and we were told that the board meeting was closed. And um, in the bylaws that we had, it said, oh, the board meeting has to be open, that that's part of the bylaws of m &N. And so we weren't allowed up into the room where they were meeting at the firehouse. They were meeting at the firehouse. And so we were, uh, it's, uh, there was uh, one of the people with us was Papaletto, who is a, uh, a neighbor of the firehouse. He's been living uh, in the barrio. He was born there. And uh, he, 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 he was so excited about the firehouse opening up and he really wanted to come to the board meeting to learn more about the firehouse and how he could interact with it. And, um, and he, um, he was shocked that he, the way we were treated, that we weren't allowed to go to the board meeting. Well, what, why, what were they discussing, something secret? this is supposed to be a public entity and we had a paper that said the bylaws were that it was open and um, and and we weren't really allowed to, to attend the meeting so um, I got in touch with the state has an office of open meetings uh, it's actually um, in Albany and um, somebody told me that I should maybe ask them what the policy was on public access and they said yes public access meetings have to be open um, I was told by one of the board members that oh well we're not really a public entity because we it's a private um, nonprofit that makes a deal with Time Warner and we said yeah but it the deal is using public money because it's the public money that's in exchange for the rights of way 
um, of, of all the hassle that pe we all have to undergo uh, while the bus waits, while the Verizon trucks gets out of our way or whatever, or digs a hole. Um, that that all there is a payback that the city has to give, which is why we have public access. So, um, and that should be open. And when I talked to Mr. Friedman, Bob Friedman, who's head of the New York State Office of Open Meetings, he said, of course, public access me uh, board meetings have to be open and he said and committee meetings too he said that's a state law in the, it's and I said well where's the law and he said it's it, he said I'll look it up and he sent me some statements about it and it's actually in the um, the cable regulations of New York State that they have to be open so we talked and we were told yes the meetings will be open so I came the next time and I came with a camera and when I got the camera out they said no you can't use the camera I, will not be matched up I won't put your face in it if, uh, I, yeah, if you have my image then I can't I have Could no control. I, I, won't, I won't put your image in. I'm Norris Chumley, the chairperson of Manhattan Neighborhood Networks. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order, please. Are you Would videoing? You like yes. He's uh, videoing. Uh, this, I understand, is being recorded. Yes, it is. I'm sorry, it is not. I'm allowed to make any recordings of any kind at, at our meeting this evening. So I have to ask you to stop your recording immediately. I was in touch this afternoon with the executive director, Robert Freeman, of the Committee for Open Government and Public Access, and there are many cases, even public access uh, in entities, even though they, are, they have a 501c3 privately, they are, op they are public entities. And there's many, he said there's an enormous amount of of case law on this. He gave me a copy. I have a copy of the of the um, law here. Uh, I'm the chairperson of the board of Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and I am say, saying now that it is not our policy to allow recordings of any kind at this meeting tonight. Um, so I you think need to you stop the recording immediately. You I do not have our permission. Well, I think you'll have to um, see, see if this is, I, 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 I got a legal opinion, if you have a legal opinion. Excuse me, Ms. Halleck, are you going to record this meeting? I am recording, yes. Then I call this meeting adjourned immediately. Second, the adjournment of the meeting. You didn't call the meeting to order. I didn't call the meeting oh, yes. to order. Okay. Well, let's have it just have it for second. the record. Second. Uh, Carolyn Foley, our board secretary, has, has seconded. All in favor? All in right. favor? And Eileen and Terry have voted in favor. So the meeting is adjourned, unfortunately. from Bob Devine today 
he was horrified at the I sent him the letter that I received from M and N, and he here's what he said: It's unbelievable that an access facility that doesn't allow access. Um, I guess we are left to conclude that seeking access to an access facility is bad behavior. Seeking transparency is bad behavior. Seeking accountability is bad behavior. Seeking to have a community-based organization be responsive to the community in which it's located is bad behavior. Seeking a metaphor is bad behavior. Expressing opinions that diverge from or challenge those of the access providers is bad behavior. I'm incredibly saddened by this latest episode. The one access organization that had the potential to make a real difference in the lives of the many various communities that ha has been hijacked and has become just one more petty non-profit fiefdom. Who do you represent? Hi, uh, the Economic Development Corporation. Uh -huh. Sir, who are you with? I'm with the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications. How uh -huh. are you? Okay. Hey, and you are with? Uh, Deep Dish Television. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. It's a very exciting morning. Yeah, it's a beautiful firehouse. Fantastic. Great. Very I just wish it was more open, you know? It's like there's hardly ever anybody here. Wow. I told you because we're, we're drumming up some publicity about it now. People will come. It's wonderful. It's People a beautiful, come, beautiful but they're not allowed in. Like, we, we came this morning and we're not allowed in. Oh, really? Yeah. It should be open to the public, the event, no? I know. I thought it was. Hi. We were told me, it was. Excuse me one second. I'm sorry. Hi. Office is right here. That's what I just told them. <laughs> and those two people that I was talking to, they saw when Jose I had attacked me. So they work here? Yeah, yeah, they work here somehow. But hi, who do you represent? Well, I want a cable. Uh huh. Yes, oh, well, thank you. it's a great channel. <laughs> they, they shouldn't talk to me. Who do you represent? Landmarks Commission. Oh, it's a great building. Yeah. I yeah. Take a look. Hi. Hi. Oh. oh my God. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Come on in, please. Hi. Hi, Ken. Very proud. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Nice to see you. Hi, yes. Nice to yes. see you. You know what really got me was the fact that all these people, you could tell people there on that street, there are not that many people wearing suits. And you knew when we saw somebody come down the street in a suit, they were going to be ushered in. And we weren't ushered, we weren't allowed in. And it would just made us more and more mad. Okay. You know, the, the issue here is injustice. If they're going to fire their workers for talking to me, and I'm a person in, my, in the community, I mean, really, that's like, that's like, you know, disallowing you to talk to the mailman, you know? Uh, but if, if they're going to do that, if, you know, then, then what is this? You know, neighborhood network, where's the democracy in neighborhood network? You know what I mean? You can't talk to people. You can't socialize in your own community. You know, that, that's tyranny. That's tyranny. I'm very livid, ladies and gentlemen. I don't like this at all. This is not good for the community. You know? What you do to the least, you do to the great. So that's what's happening here. I 
just think we're talking about an institution that is becoming institutionalized and needs the people to speak up and say how they want it to run and be more involved in the organ in the running of it and uh, it's a wonderful resource. We've got to take care of it. We've got to make sure we we find out how it's run and give suggestions about it and and get the media activists the back there. That's the thing that is the most upsetting. It used to be there were a lot of people who had experience teaching and being involved with media activism. None of those people are there anymore. None. They're all, they've all had their jobs removed or whatever. So you get some people who you know the pe the new people who are hired are a lot of people who come from broadcast television who don't have that kind of um, uh, background of of really fighting for alternative media and that's what we need to do we can't just sit back and let it happen we need to help make Manhattan neighborhood network be what it has the potential for being and can be and and, and has been, and uh, we need to make sure it's transparent and, and a place where people feel safe and, and to express themselves. I mean, Papaletto tried to express himself, and uh, now I'm uh, banned from, because I taped him expressing himself, I'm banned from even going in there for three months. And who do you represent? Oh, why not? They're not allowing us in. The, well, Iris Morales doesn't want me in the building because I was part of a training program that was here, and I was also a member of a committee that had issues with the board of directors. And she told me I can't be on a committee that has issues against the board of directors and participate in the programming that's going on here. So I can't be concerned about the community and be involved here. And so we tried to get in earlier, and they told us, where's our invitation, blah, blah, blah. You can't come in. Those invites came via email. Hmm? The invites came via email. Well, well I didn't get one. one I, but the one my boss got was via email. But this is a, a community <laughs> we got a, event. I got an email, and then I, I forwarded it to Papo, assuming that it was a public event. It's not justified to lock me out of here. Right. You know? Are you? Who do you represent? CBC. What? Because that's just gonna bullshit you with inform most, um, false information, so you should know. Thanks for letting me know, Papa. Okay. Who do you represent? Verizon. Uh huh. Good morning. This is this is the. One. You have a who's who of uh, suits. <laughs> Not to mention that suit. Fit that guy poorly. It's gonna be all over the damn place. Good morning, Councilwoman. You ready to go? Oh, we've been locked out. They're not gonna let us in. Why? Just to let you know. They, well, we, we, I heard it was a community event, and they they said we had to be on the list. And oh. Good morning. Hi, who do you represent? Uh, Kings Water Financial. Come inside. Come inside, please. I know you. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Mr. Stringer. Hi, hey, guys. How are you? Uh, we're, we, the community is being kept out. To this activity. I live six blocks away, but we're being banned. This is their floor. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice you to doing? meet you. What's your name? I'm Von Diaz. Hey, Von Diaz. Yeah, good to meet you. This is Didi Howard. Uh, are they? Were they? Open you can go in. They, they're not letting us in. Gotcha. We're blocked out. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we're activists. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well. But um, it's always a, a struggle. It's a. Uh, 
to try to keep public access going, but it depends on the active participation of the producers and the community that watches and loves public access. And I know there's view, there, people say, oh, nobody watches public access. That's not true. I mean, I, I think a lot of people watch public access. I, I know Herb Schiller, when we first did Paper Tiger, Herb Schiller said, if he walked five blocks in Manhattan, someone would come up to him and say, oh, I saw you on TV. He, oh, he loved telling that story, he, he, and I was walking with him once when that happened. So it, people do watch public access. They say pe more people watch public access than watch public television. And when they've done studies, they did a study in Austin and also in Portland, Oregon, and th that was the surprising result was that more people watched public access than watched public television. The first question is, why is access a First Amendment issue? Well, access is a First Amendment issue uh, because uh, in order for citizens and groups to reach other citizens and other groups in today's society, it's necessary to have access to the mass media. Uh, now, back in the, uh, in the early days of our country, it was possible uh, because communities were relatively small and there were no electronic mass media that predominated uh, information flows. Uh, it was possible for citizens to reach each other uh, via pamphlets and leaflets or simply soapboxes on street corners. Uh, today, however, that's not possible. It's the only way you're going to reach uh, most of your fellow citizens. The only way community groups are going to speak to each other is via the mass media, uh, which has become the uh, major uh, way in which information is received by uh, the public today. And uh, in each community uh, throughout the country, uh, there is usually uh, very limited uh, opportunities to speak over the mass media. Only a few uh, broadcasters could be licensed per community. Broadcasters are subject to a public trustee obligation called the Fairness Doctrine, which requires them to provide reasonable coverage of, contra uh, of controversial issues of public importance and to provide reasonable opportunity for contrasting viewpoints, as well as uh, sometimes to, re to allow third parties to come on the air. However, cable television uh, is, uh, is a different matter. Cable is different from over-the-air television because of the vast channel capacity of cable. Uh, many of the newer systems have well over 50 channels. Some have a, over 100 channels. And so it's now possible uh, for citizens to speak to one another uh, via uh, the television. And the way that's done is via access channels. Now, why is it necessary to have, uh, have a, a right of access to certain cable channels? Because in each community, there is normally only one cable operator. Economic characteristics of the cable industry uh, usually have dictated that only one cable system can financially survive per community. It's a natural monopoly industry, so to speak. And uh, so there is only one cable system per community. Well, if that one system uh, operator uh, has complete control over all 100 channels, then uh, that information gatekeeper can control the diversity of information uh, that's available in that community. And that information gatekeeper, the cable operator, uh, may, for arbitrary reasons, absent any kind of access requirements, uh, exclude viewpoints with which uh, the cable operator disagrees, or perhaps uh, exclude uh, uh, programming uh, that may compete with the cable operator's own programming. Uh, in the cable industry today, uh, there's a great deal of vertical integration. In addition to the fact that there is only one system per community, most of the systems around the country these days are owned by large multimedia corporate conglomerates. Uh, so to get back to the major point, uh, a cable operator is an information gatekeeper and may control access to the electronic public forum uh, in each community. Uh, unless there are some sort of access requirements imposed that uh, allow uh, individuals and groups and programming services 
uh, access to certain channels uh, on a first come, first served basis, content neutral basis, uh, beyond the editorial control of the cable operator. And, and the Supreme Court has said that the First Amendment is, front, is founded on the principle that the public is best served by the maximum diversification of information in uh, our society. And the only way that information diversity goal is going to be served in today's society, in my view, is by having some sort of access, right of access, to at least a certain number of cable channels in any community. Because there's only one cable system. The cable, uh, the, the, ca the cable system is effectively the electronic public forum. It's, 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 uh, it's the, it serves the same purposes as the public streets did before. And access channels provide electronic soapboxes. So that's really why access is a First Amendment issue. Who do you represent? Up the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone. Uh-huh. Come on in. Thank you. Zenaida, we have it on tape. someone kills them so that I can come and have access to the facility here because I am being locked out by people of color. There's irony for you. That's exactly what happens. People walk by and go, charged with what they do to me. All right, next one. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's now they got a plaque. Let's see the plaque. Let's see the plaque. Proclamation. <laughs> themselves to be with the, to be with the uh, speaker or whatever. What is the string there? He's a what? Mm. What is he, a representative or what? Are you one of the youth producers? Yes. And what's your name? Oh, um, I'm Patrick Foreman. Oh, you're one of the uh, youth channel people, right? Yes, yes. Oh. You know, they won't let us in. Oh, they let him sign. He's the right, he's the color that you have to sign in with. <laughs> Man, if you don't have card blanche skin, you got to sign in. <laughs> Yo, Salute, how you doing? Morning. Morning. They have him okay. speak right away. They won't let us in. It's not a public uh, opening. Now this guy's showing you his patch. I mean, did he do that like belligerently or smiling? Look at his, did you see what was on there under his belt? A gun? Yeah. <laughs> we fought to change the color of the tyrant. Now they are black and brown, the tyrants. You know, we are them. Is this poster glorifies uh, the things that they say they've been up to, you know? Uh, here is, uh, these are two classmates of mine when I was taking the Community Builders Training Program. Let me read it to you, watch this. The m and El Barrio Firehouse launched the Community Builders Training in February 2012 as a pilot program for persons interested in producing community-oriented programming. The two-month intensive provides basic camera and video editing knowledge. A 
upon successful completion, participants certify as a barrio firehouse field producers. A new cycle begins in late July. Not everyone in the community is allowed in here or welcome. And uh, as, you know, as long as we waited for this building to exist so that we could work here, now we can. Freedom of speech, free speech.